So let's take a closer look at a few of these mouthpieces. I'm not going to go through all of them for the sake of time, just the main ones that I've played and I think that, that you might be interested in hearing more about as we go through this. Uh, up first is a J.J. Babbitt Autolink from around 1997 that cost a whole $74 back then. Uh, so value and money, I mean, with inflation, it's probably about the same now. But the Babbitt links came with everything that you see here or come with still. So a standard uh, just metal ligature, plain old mouthpiece cap, and then the mouthpiece itself. Um, Auto links have a kind of a largest round chamber. And it's been a sound that I've really loved over the years. I played this mouthpiece as my primary mouthpiece from 1997, really up until a couple of years ago. And for me, it's still the most comfortable and best sounding mouthpiece that I have. Comparatively, here's a modern, a more modern Babbitt link. You can see from the previous uh, previous video that the the rubber degradation really changes colors over time. This is pretty much brand new. I haven't played this one much. It feels a lot more resistant uh, than than the original link that I bought. And real quick, let's throw this Meyer Seven into the mix. Uh, keep your eyes peeled at estate sales because I bought two Meyer 5s, this 7M, and the Selmer Soloist Style F for $8 sitting in a case. Uh, I asked how much the plastic was, and the woman said 8 bucks. So I gladly grabbed the mouthpieces and ran. I should probably uh, shed some of these because I don't really play the Meyers, but much like the Autolink, it's, it's a little bit mellower, I feel, than the Link is. Uh, it doesn't get quite the bite, which is why I like the Link a little bit more. But for a standard jazz mouthpiece for not a lot of money, a Meyer is probably the best bang for your buck. Here we have a Jody Jazz HR Star. It comes with a Rico H ligature, uh, the, mouth, the mouthpiece cap that fits that ligature. And then um, it all comes in this nice pouch. Uh, I really do like the Jody Jazz, but it has a little bit smaller chamber than the Autolink, and it's a little bit brighter. Uh, it's not really up to my taste. A little bit harder for me to get used to playing but it's been a great mouthpiece in the pinch when I feel like I'm not getting where I need to with the other mouthpieces. And last, let's take a look at the Theo One I one from Better Sax a couple of months ago. Uh, this is what you get with the mouthpiece. Um, their enlightened ligature, that leather pouch, the mouthpiece tip and, and table cap, and the mouthpiece itself. I have been enjoying playing this mouthpiece. Uh, is it worth the $600? You tell me the sound differences you hear from the recordings and you decide has been a lot of fun to play, having a larger chamber mouthpiece with less resistance. Uh, it has been, has been an adjustment for me playing alto, but I have been enjoying it. Um, so you can see, as I showed you in the last video, it has that shark gill kind of striation on the inside of the mouthpiece. And it does have scooped out sidewalls. And with this different camera, I don't know if it's going to come out any differently. It's kind of having a hard time focusing. Uh, but inside that chamber, is, is, it is larger than you'd see in the Autolink because it is scooped out uh, towards the back. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, feel free to like and subscribe. I'm going to keep making videos about all of the saxophone gear laying around my house. Feel free to leave comments down below too. I'm interested in what you think about those four mouthpieces and which one sounds the best to you.